if you're watching this video, then there is a 90% chance that you're not able to understand that what exactly is the difference between synchronous apex and asynchronous apex. And what the hell is this future method? If that's really the case, then don't worry. In this video, I'm going to explain you the difference between synchronous as well as asynchronous apex in a very easy manner. And I'm also going to tell you what exactly is the future method and why do you need that? Coming up. The first thing that we need to understand is the difference between synchronous apex and asynchronous apex. I'm going to take a very simple example in order to make you understand that. Imagine you're running a hotel and you've got a car with a driver, which is actually a resource for you. And this car is basically used to pick up and drop your guests from or to the airport. Today, you've got three different guests to whom you need to drop to the airport one after the other with the help of the car that you have along with the driver. So when we say that the driver uh, needs to drop the guests one after the other, that means it's a synchronous operation or a synchronous task or a synchronous method in which uh, the tasks are getting executed in a particular order or in a particular fashion. Now let's say that your driver also needs to drop a heavy package to your farmhouse which is located 100 kilometers from your hotel uh, by making sure that no guest uh, gets delayed for their flight and they all should be dropped on time at the airport. Because if they miss the flight, then you have to give them accommodation for one more day and that too for free. Now in this case, when the driver needs to drop the guests on time to the airport, as well as needs to drop that heavy package to your farmhouse, uh, what should we do? If you've got only one car, then either one of the things needs to wait and which one needs to wait in this particular case. The like drop, the airport drop of the guest that you have or the package drop to your farmhouse. Obviously the package drop to your farmhouse because that's not a time bound task and it's a heavy duty task because of which other important operations or other important tasks that the driver uh, along with the car needs to do can be halted, right? So in this case, we'll ask our driver to drop the package whenever he is free uh, by also making sure that the guests are dropped at the airport on the right time. Exactly. So whenever we need to do some heavy lifting which requires a lot of time and which can actually starve the other operations or the other tasks that we need to perform uh, which might be time bound or uh, which are very important than the one that you want to do uh, which can take up the resource and starve, uh, take up the resource for a longer duration or uh, take up all of the resources needs to wait for the other operations or the other tasks to get completed first and then whenever the resources will be available all of those resources will be allocated to the tasks which requires heavy lifting so in this car case uh, the like 100 kilometer path can be traveled later after dropping the guest to the airport and this is exactly what asynchronous operation or asynchronous uh, method or asynchronous apex actually does. Let me just tell you exactly what I said. Whenever the resources are available, then only the heavy lifting tasks or the heavy lifting jobs will get done based on the availability of the resources. Because if they'll take the resources right now, they'll starve the other processes or they'll starve the other tasks from resources, which will actually create a big problem for us. Now let us compare these situations with Apex, like how this car and this driver or these guests or these heavy packages that you need to deliver is relevant to Apex. The driver and car equals to resources, computing resources or the server, uh, server's computing resources or the processor that you need in order to perform that particular job. Dropping passengers is equals to normal tasks or normal jobs that you need to do in a particular order at a particular time. Dropping the heavy package equals to heavy duty job or heavy duty task which can uh, starve the, uh, like the normal tasks from the resources or halt or interrupt the normal tasks or the normal jobs that we are doing in that particular food. Tasks which wait for the resources to be available because they need the resources for a longer duration or uh, more computing resources are required for, uh, by those particular tasks are actually called as asynchronous tasks. Now in Apex, if you want to create an asynchronous task, you need to create a method which is a future method. And how do we do that? By just annotating the method with future annotation. You just need to write down at future above the method declaration. And uh, with that, you make that particular method as future method. Future method provide the benefits of not blocking the users from performing another operations 
and also uh, providing higher governor and executional limits for the processes. In Apex, there can be one of the five situations that I'm gonna be listing right now because of which you need to create a method, a future method. Let's see what they are. Number one, the one that I was discussing from so long. If your tasks require the resources for a longer duration, you need to create that particular method as a future method. Number two, to make an API call out. This is the most important use case for a future method because a lot of developers at a lot of time make an API call out to another system or another application to get some information or to put some information or to do whatever they want to do with that particular API call out. But if you want to make an API call out inside Apex, you need to create that particular method where, where you're actually calling out an API as a future method. Number three, to perform a bulk data operation. If you want to perform a bulk data operation, then you need to create that particular method as a future method. Generally, it is done in batch Apex or something like that, where, uh, where you are actually uh, updating or creating or deleting a lot of data at the same time. That, that is basically what bulk data operation is, right? Number four, when you think that this particular code can actually hit the governor limits and you need to avoid that situation or you want to avoid that situation, then in that case, uh, you need to create that particular method as a future method to avoid hitting governor limits. Last but definitely not the least, to avoid mixed DML operations. And that's all what you need to know in order to understand the difference between asynchronous and synchronous Apex and what exactly is a future method. You got it right. In the next video, we'll be talking about how to actually create a future method and how to test it and what are the best practices while creating a future method. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button over here as well as the notification bell icon which is present over here because you'll be the first one to get notified whenever we will post that new video. And if you like this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down on the bottom if you have any question related to future method. I'll be happy to answer all of those questions. Till the next video.